So where shall I sit? Sarvana, you can sit right on the end there, um, right by uh, JFR would be great. Okay, let me get my... And after Sarvana is in, sp in her spot, we shall begin. Asmita, if you would look around and let me know how many spaces are left, you can IM Rhiannon and let her know that some can come over, um, or I can do that. Okay, and uh, just IM Rhiannon. Okay. I'm assuming the gentleman beside me is JF. <laughs> Yes, that's JFR, and I'll be introducing him shortly. So welcome, everyone. I believe we're ready to begin. If everyone would take a seat as you're arriving, I would like you to look at the poster that is up behind me. And let me just pan around and see how many are here. Great, we have a lovely um, audience here. Please hold your questions for the end. And we will have questions. And Sarvana, if you could turn off your mic until we're ready for you, uh, since we're live streaming. Okay, and I'm going to change my animation there real quick. Okay. And let uh, Rihanna know that she can send a few over. Notice that uh, when we talk about NFTs on the slide, there is a contradictory view over authorship by the U.S. and the EU jurisdiction and the conditions the artists had in the recent exhibition. This exhibition was curated by Asmita Duranjaya. And um, hopefully at the end of our presentation today, you will be able to view some of the amazing cyber art that was assisted by artificial intelligence. Our panelists today are Caro Feire, JFR, Sarvana, and we have Merit and Asmita who are recording for us. Asmita has organized this panel and I am serving as moderator. Most of you know that I'm Dr. Valerie Hill, the Librarian in Virtual Worlds, Director of the Community Virtual Library, supporting the Virtual Worlds Education Consortium. Now, as Nita is not using voice, but I'm going to ask her to feel free to use the local chat as we follow the text right here in local chat in Second Life. I mentioned Merit is recording, and hopefully you can see this presentation on the YouTube live stream. Our first panelist is sitting here to my left, Caro Feire. Caro Feire was born in the UK. She started her career as an actress and then ran a preschool playgroup. She raised three kids, was a photographer and an installation artist. She has a BA and Master um, of Arts in Photography and Multimedia. Caro discovered virtual worlds 15 years ago on discovering their potential for creativity. The only limitations being your imagination and the ability to make it happen. She's done the Second Life birthday events and Burning Man events since 2009. And then she entered OpenSim, and now the OS Grid is her home, from where she does numerous OpenSim events and has an empire of her own. Caro does not have voice activated, so I will speak for Caro, and this is her presentation, starting now. Hello, everyone. This is my first experience with AI and art. Well, almost any AI. And it was through Asmita. She asked me to take part in the exhibition, Cyber AI as Artistic Assistance, hosted at Rockcliffe University. We could use DALI, Midjourney, or Stable Diffusion, and had to use cyber in the title. I accepted with trepidation. We were not allowed to upload other picture, pictures into the AI rendering but we were allowed to add prims to the final picture and an animation. This was to make the final exhibition our own art. 
I chose to use Dally, partly because it was free, but also it looked less intimidating on first investigation, and it came with a certain amount of credits for generating pictures, four at the time. I had a vague idea of what image I wanted and started telling the AI. The results were confusing at first, and some were vaguely reminiscent of other images. Having exhausted my free generations very fast, not very successfully, I bought another pack, not expensive. I watched some YouTube videos with tips on how to use the program. My words were Cybo Hero, Central, Holding the World. I discovered that by putting 3D in front of the cyber superhero, it made it stand out. I tried a few in the style of other artists, but quickly decided they weren't my picture, but borrowed. The more detailed the sequence, the better the results, like holding the world in his hands. It seems the vocabulary is limited. I had trouble getting a complete figure in the center. Central, that didn't do it either. And center, kind of did, but to the side or above. In the end, I got the right result from 3D cyber superhero holding the world in his hands. Complete figure in the center of the picture against a backdrop of dark a backdrop of dark clouds and a rainbow. I tried to make it add fire on one side at the bottom and water on the other, but got strange results. So decided I could use my prims for that. My second picture was 3D cyber cat in the center of the picture, eating spaghetti against a background of a smart restaurant full of people. Not bad results, but I wanted more, so I added, full of horrified people. I just got horrified expressions on the cat face, so scrapped that idea. Then I tried to make it add thought bubbles for the cat, enclosing a mouse. I then did variations on that picture. The resulting images were gibberish, not good results. So again, I decided to use my prims for that. Having finished my exhibit pictures as an, a, as an art experiment, I then got the AI to add thought bubbles, enclosing the mice as an uploaded texture. But it didn't look as good as the prim ones, and all variations were very bad. The word art has many forms. 3D, as in sculpture, pottery, carvings, 2D paintings, drawings, and photography. But it all springs from one mind and the individual's interpretation of their experiences. So I have come to the conclusion that this is a collaboration between the artist and the AI. The artist has the initial idea, maybe born from within their own experiences and then has to communicate with the right words to the AI in order to get the image or result they envisioned. But also, the AI has acquired its knowledge from vast databases of images. Thus, the AI becomes the go-between for the original images and the artist's words making the final picture. So it is a three-way collaboration, unlike painting or photography, which is purely the artist's work and interpretation of feeling, very different. So there needs to be a separate category for art generated by an AI and artists' original works need to be protected from AI. I can see for some uses it could be good. Book illustrations, maybe, and other 
others like posters, flyers, etc. I might well use an AI-generated picture as part of a backdrop, or part of a larger art installation, or even as a texture on a prim. I found the program to be a bit frustrating, and I kept wanting to move to Photoshop after getting the results. I am not sure I would use this form of art as art. Not much, but we'll continue to experiment and play with it, but not as a pure art picture. For me, the pictures generated by AI are very clever, but they lack soul. All my art has echoes of memories mixed with fantasy and no AI can get inside my head. Yet. That was from Caro. Thank you, Caro. Very interesting story about how you have explored AI-generated art as an artist. And we thank you, Caro. And our next panelist is JFR. And I've been trying to fix my AO, which is hard to do while you're present presenting, so I know if I'm looking weird, just ignore my jumpy avatar. So for, a for JFR, JFR Beaumont, cross-media artist, hashtag AI, AR, VR, RL. Here's his, um, cha his uh, website, uurart.com. Jean-Francois Reviard, hope I said that right, a.k.a. Jeff J.F.R., is a Swiss contemporary artist in Switzerland. Right now it's snowing there. This is a very global panel. He has, uh, he's known for his innovative approach to art and his pioneering work in web television and virtual worlds. He has gained international recognition through his participation in prestigious art fairs and exhibitions around the world, including the Zurich Art Fair and events in Berlin, Paris, London, and Tokyo. JFR's most recent works introduce the use of artificial intelligence and 3D printing in his art, as well as the incorporation of augmented reality, AR, in a series called Multidimensional Art. These cutting edge technologies allow Reviard to create truly unique and immersive art experiences that challenge traditional notions of what is possible in the art world. In addition to his work in web television and virtual worlds, Reviard is also known for his use of traditional mediums such as painting and sculpture in art. He often com combines these mediums with new technologies to create a fusion of the old and the new, which has earned him a reputation as a forward-thinking artist who is not afraid to push the boundaries of traditional art forms. Overall, Jean-Francois Raviard is a talented and innovative artist who is constantly exploring new ways to create and share his art with the world. He, his use of artificial intelligence, 3D printing, augmented reality in his most recent works is a testament to his dedication to pushing the boundaries of traditional art forms and introducing new technologies into the art world. Now I will turn the mic over to you, JFR. Hello, thanks for this uh, nice presentation. Um, well, what a subject. It's so enormous, so big to speak about all these new things. And of course, all this history uh, bringing us to these uh, new things and in this new era. Uh, I am an old, old uh, digital uh, creator. I like to define myself as a cross-media uh, maker, picture, picture maker. And uh, because I use uh, several tools since uh, the 80s, uh, first videos, painting, and after videos I'm using Web TV, and after Web TV it's coming other things, uh, and uh, now we are with NFTs and uh, AI, and, and so on, so on, so uh, For me, there is no change by the fact. 
because for me the main uh, story is the uh, the idea, the, the DNA of uh, this is art. And what is this? What is it? Uh, it's, uh, I also will say that it's a way of life first. And uh, we are in a confused era because there is so many people making art, but maybe it's only just hobbies and, uh, and, and things. It's so confused. But first, we need to say what is art, to define art. What is it? It's a concept, it's an idea, it's a world or a drawing or, or something. What is the, the, the beginning of art? Where is the beginning of your art? What push you to make art? What push you to create? This is the main question. And after, you have the problem to make a transcription of your ideas, your concept, and uh, your statement into something real. Because for me, there is no difference because between reality, virtual reality, augmented reality. There is one word, reality. Reality is what we made. And uh, we use different tools for that. We use AI, we use uh, VR, we use uh, pencil, we use many things. And when we, you have defined uh, your, uh, your, your, the birth of your art, the beginning of your art, you can decide to use this tool or this tool in order to uh, contact other people or to uh, be viewing by some people who are inside Second Life or are inside uh, other metaverse or uh, inside uh, the reality also in normal gallery because there is always normal gallery, there is always art fair, there is always people visiting uh, the studio of uh, the artist. And uh, the reality is made now with uh, many, many different levels. You choose your level and you choose the tools you need to be inside the level you choose to show your art. This is so simple. Machine, they don't do art. For, for me, it's clear. Photoshop, if I uh, bring, uh, I, I uh, open Photoshop in my screen, nothing happens. If I uh, open, uh, Dale or any uh, AI uh, platform, nothing happened. I need to introduce an idea. I need to introduce something coming from me. Because nothing happened if you have uh, the most beautiful pastel in front of a, a white canvas, nothing happened. It's the same for AI and uh, NFTs and uh, NFTs. It's, uh, some, uh, it's very simple for me. NFT is a gallery in order to uh, show your art very simply inside the digital uh, world, the digital world. No, no, no difficulties. You put your pictures, you have a very simple uh, open scene. Uh, everybody can use it. It's so simple. You put your picture on it. You, you make a price. It's like inside a normal gallery. You put your picture on the wall and you make a price. It's the same. It's clearly for me the same. It's only just the support we change. And we make, we can speak during hours and hours. Is it uh, art or not art? Art, it's a, uh, coming from the brain of human first. If you don't have brain, and uh, AI don't have brain, it's only just uh, some tools for uh, making uh, some research. It's a big uh, 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 Google. It's, uh, any, <laughs> it's just a big Google. And uh, if I repeat always to people, if you bring uh, AI is the most incredible, perfect uh, uh, AI tool on your computer. Nothing happened. You you don't have at the end of the night uh, something, uh, uh, painting or uh, pictures or something. You need to bring first your brain, and this is a big problem because we make a confusion. Uh, we need to stay back and to go back to the beginning of this. Our brain. We are human. We have the, the capabilities, the power of uh, making intervention on the real. This is an artist. An artist make intervention on the reality and bring it to the other people. This is so simple. If you see that like this, 
you can draw, you can take a white page and you draw your idea, your world, and after you can go to AI, to NFT, to, to what you want. It's not a problem. But first, you need culture, you need to read, you need to think, you need to, to, to talk with people, you need to go to nature to take inspiration from nature. You need to uh, see different civilization, different way of thinking in order to create. And this is not made by machine. A machine brings you nothing. It's only just an help. We, we never say art generated by pastel. We don't say art generated by oil paint, by oil. We don't say uh, art generated by uh, paint, by, by the, 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 the stone. <laughs> it's like you put a stone on your garden. You can wait months and months. Nothing happens. You don't have a, a Rodin sculpture or something like that. You don't have a, a, a art. It's, it's only just a stone. And AI and NFTs and everything, it's only just stone that we use like in, a, in the primal way of making art, like the first people making art. We have two stones and we make fire. And with fire, we can take uh, um, some black uh, things in order to make something on the wall and to create. But first, there is stone, and we need to find how we can use stone. But for this, we need idea. I saw so many things without idea. Beautiful is not meaning that there is idea behind or concept or statement or, or, or culture or the work of uh, uh, knowledge and uh, education and, and things like that. Most of the things I see, it's not so interesting. It's not uh, touching me. It's uh, beautiful. There is beautiful uh, uh, picture. There is beautiful uh, things made by uh, AI, Photoshop. And, uh, of course, we need to be clear. It's not so simple. If you want beautiful picture like the main, main, most uh, uh, well-known well known, uh, artist uh, of AI, you need Photoshop, you need uh, uh, many other software in order to do these kind of things. It not, it's never do only just with AI, with some word you put inside. It's Sometimes it's days and days of research, of, uh, of, uh, of word, of, uh, of things like that. It's not so simple. Art needs time on the brain first. Without brain, no art. That's my point of view. And Wonderful. Like that. <laughs> Thank I you like so that. much, JFR. It's fascinating, your take on uh, art and the human brain. And... Um, <clears throat> We thank you for that. Our next panelist is Sarvana. She has been working with NFTs. Sally S. Cherry of Cherry Consulting Network is a medical laboratory scientist specializing in 3D immersive virtual worlds, development, and STI laboratory methods training. She specializes as a 3D immersive virtual worlds community content creator and a healthcare social media consultant. So I'll give you her profile on LinkedIn. Sarvana is going to talk to us about NFTs and get us thinking about how that relates to AI-assisted art and the future of all this technology. Sarvana? Well, good afternoon, good afternoon. As you stated, <clears throat> I'm a medical laboratory scientist, so the scientist in me sees NFTs as tools and I've listened to, and uh, I see the wonderful art that's created. So this is, I see NFTs as a tool to get this art into the world for whatever purpose. Maybe purpose to show, maybe purpose to sell. But the number one question that always comes to me is, what is an NFT? Basically, NFT is, is short for non-fungible token. A non-fungible token is basically a unique non-interchangeable unit of data, art, maybe a photograph, maybe a, a, a painting, but this is, this is non, uh, non-interchangeable. And basically it's put on a blockchain, it's stored on a blockchain, and that's the usual question comes with the blockchain. And I tell people, uh, visualize blocks of data. Think of a child's play, play blocks. Stacked together, linked together with the data, and they're linked wherein you cannot take these blocks apart without damaging the previous block because they are linked together, thus forming a chain. 
That's where the term blockchain comes from. Basically, blocks of data about the digital media that was introduced to the blockchain. Purchased with a cryptocurrency, has each block, each item has a unique identification code and the metadata that's distinguished it from each other. And this is part of the linkage. But one thing that the, the NFT does, especially if you've been created this wonderful art, it links the ownership to that unique digital or even physical a work. Some people may do physical work and they take images of it or may take prints of it. They can also put them, create them as, create an NFT. NFTs can be traded or exchanged. One cannot, I'm sorry, cannot be traded or exchanged one for another at equal in value. Wherein with a fungible token, which is a good old U.S. dollar or whatever your local, your current national currency is, a dollar equals a dollar. Whatever your other currency may be, it equals can it equals for equals. One equals one. When with an NFT, it does not change. You cannot interchange it there. But one thing I want to get in, I know my time is a little short here. I just want a couple of things I, I stress. If you're looking to use the NFTs and look at the NFTs, there's been a lot of talk about NFTs. NFTs is a tool. The whole process, the whole of creating the NFT, that's a tool to get the the masterpieces, the artwork out there for whatever purpose you want to get out there for social good, for uh, raise fundraising, for promoting promoting a particular mission. Uh, the NFTs I created, I created NFTs about Save the Monarch Butterflies, which is an endangered species. But for whatever purpose you want to use the NFT as a tool to show the real showcase, the real creation of the artist. Now, a lot of times when you put your digital media out there, people cut and paste, copy and paste and what have you. But with NFT art, it comes with a digital certificate. It's one of the advantages of the NFT. When you mint that NFT, you create a digital, digital certificate that reflects the ownership of that creative digital art. And I'm going to go a um, couple major steps here, and I hope I don't go too fast, but I want to cover these real quickly. Create the NFT. You want to, I cannot stress this enough, do your homework. There's a lot of research. You research, ask questions, focus on, or think about the target audience that you're trying to reach or want to present your artwork to. Different folks, different strokes for different folks. Every blockchain may not fit your artwork or the level of your artwork or the subjects of your artwork. So do your homework, research, and ask questions about the NFTs and the blockchains. Then you decide on a blockchain. There's several blockchains, and basically this is the mechanism of the process in uh, the process with the a uh, process in the NFT. You may have a proof um, proof of works. You may have a, a proof of stake, and there's several other types of blockchains. But you want to decide which blockchain you want to use to mint your NFT. Then you're going to decide on which of your digital media may be for photograph, artwork that you want to put on the blockchain, that you want to create to put on the blockchain. Create your media or maybe already create it. But when I said whenever you put it up there, tell the story. Too often I see people put up artwork in just a picture. Okay, you're, you're taking away from that picture. I want to know what is the story because it's not just using that that platform, the blockchain, just to get the picture out there, you want to bring life to that picture to the blockchain. You want to tell the story. So you use that description and you get the opportunity when you met your NFT to write a description. I said your description should tell the story of your digital media. Was it created to benefit a social uh, a social mission? Was it created to uh, bring awareness to endangered species? Was it put it to bring awareness to a war-torn country? Was it presented to raise funds? Was it created to raise funds for a nonprofit? Tell the story. Give life, to give additional life. Of, you already bred life into the artwork, but give additional life to your artwork because the NFT is just another pla It's another way to get another way to get that out there so people can see your creations. 
once you've created your your story for your digital for your digital artwork, purchase the cryptocurrency that is accepted on the desired blockchain that you're using, and then you're gonna choose a marketplace. Now this is I'm all, uh, at the end here. I have a link. I'm not sure. I'm sure some of you've already come across it. There's a recommended resource I have, I'm gonna I'll share with you at the very bottom. But you want to uh, choose a marketplace to mint, exhibit, and sell your NFTs. Set up a wallet compatible to the desired blockchain. You can connect. You can be connecting your wallet to the desired NFT market. Then you're gonna upload. They're saying like one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. It's quite a few steps, but once you get the flow of setting up an NFT or creating an NFT, it's just so uh, almost an automatic thing. You're gonna upload that digital media. You're going to add the requested information. They'll add certain things, how many you want to sell. Most people will sell one of one. Some have, I've seen some will sell in multiples, but the one of one usually has the most value, will go for the uh, most value. Because you put, especially if you have an original, you ideally want to sell it as one of one, but it really depends on the type of artwork. There's some generated artwork that people have sold multiple copies of them. You set the price, you set the number of editions you want to sell, and another thing that you set as an artist, you set the percentage for royalties. Because one thing when you put your artwork on the blockchain as an NFT, it may sell once, someone may sell it a second time, may sell it a third time. Each time that artwork sells, that royalty comes back, whatever you decide, maybe 10%, 15%, 20%, or whatever. That comes back to you, the creator. Once you establish when you met that that uh, uh, digital media, the royalties that you want to get, that's something that just comes back to you. You don't have to work about the middleman. It comes back to the creator. Once you create your your NFT and confirm the confirm. The creation, make sure it's confirmed because sometimes, oh, wow, it's up there, it's up there, and you step away. You want to make sure you get a confirmation that it was created, that it has been locked on that blockchain. Now the fun part comes, and just I always tell people, you have a, have a grand opening, have a party, have a celebration, make an announcement. You want to promote and share the information about your artwork that you have made and that you have minted into an NFT. Tell about its purpose. Have a grand opening. I have a um, a gallery in Kitely where I have a I exhibit uh, artwork from artists from around the from around the globe, and it's all linked to. Although we're I'm I, I'm not Kitely is not on the blockchain, but the NFTs are linked to the blockchains. They have a link so someone can come in, look at the gallery, see the artwork, and they can click on it, and they're taken right to the marketplace. And this is, you can be on the blockchain and promote your artwork. You can be in a 3D virtual world that's not on the blockchain and still promote your artwork. But the most important thing is seeing NFT, the NFT process as a valuable platform, quotation mark, tool to share your artwork to the world, to offer your artwork to the world. You may just want to show it. You may just want to sell it. Some people have even given some of their art way, artwork away. I have a colleague in the UK. He creates amazing artwork, and he he gives away in airdrops because he just he's in for the creation. But um, one thing I want to close out here with Val is one of the recommended, and I can put this in the when I'm able to put this in the chat, Val. Yes, and then we need to move forward. If you drop that in the chat, um, people can will be able to access it there. Thank you one, so much. One, the last thing I'd like to say is I highly recommend it. Those of you who are not aware of it, I'm sure a lot of you are aware of it. Online, one of the recommended resources to artists is called The Artist. It's the artist.me slash tech. And I will give direct you straight to where they did a nice piece on what is NFT art. And I will put that link into the chat right now. It's not coming. I may have to get the chat is. 
Okay, and while you're while you're putting that into the chat, I will mention. I am, am going to give it to you because it's not sure. the chat is not popping up. Okay, you can drop that to me, and I'll explain that our next panelist, Rhiannon, is over at the nonprofit Commons, so she will not be here speaking with us, but they are watching the live stream. And thank you so much. For, oh, I see it. You put it in the local chat. It's the artist dot me. Um, what is NFT art? And um, Rhiannon had done an amazing uh, session for the Open Sim Conference on AI generated art. So a lot of people are exploring these applications and we will be dropping some links to AI art generation apps um, after our question and answer period. I'd like to invite these panelists to respond to each other. Perhaps you have different um, things that you might want to address um, about being an artist and the use uh, when Carol was talking about how not yet has she really come to terms with how the artist utilizes AI and separates it from your own work. And same with JFR. So if you have any questions for each other, you can use voice or you can use local chat to um, to ask questions. Okay, and um, I can give you the link to the OSCC uh, video that I just mentioned to you, The Art of AI, that Rhiannon is sharing. I'll grab that link. So did you have anything in response to Sarvana or Caro, JFR, that you'd like to, to mention? Um, I wanted to open it up to you panelists first before we take questions from the audience. Thank you, Sarvana, for those links in chat. Um, and you all might want to save those for later. And as well, I'm putting the, um, the Google document and the YouTube video from a session from the Open Sim Conference called the Art of AI Workshop. And I'll ask Rhiannon to put those into um, the local chat where that group is. And so I'll pull those out of the chat right now. And also, Asmita is our organizer. If you have anything you'd like to put in local chat, feel free to type. Um, and I'm just waiting to see if the panelists have any response for each other on thinking about the future of AI, art, and NFTs. Please feel free to use voice or local chat, and I will read it for the recording. I think JFR is typing. So it's just a fascinating time to think about how AI is impacting our lives in so many ways with, with art. And um, as Mita says, JFR has a very nice gallery for NFTs. Um, he might give us that link. Yes, I, have I just give the, the link of uh, NFT galleries. Uh, because uh, as I say, the uh, savanna, what's very interesting, and uh, you know, to or to present also your uh, your art, for your NFT art, and uh, the system of a virtual gallery with on Cyber, for example, there is uh, many other uh, platforms of that, and it's very interesting because you build as inside Southern Life, you build your uh, gallery and you can show your. Uh, your uh, your NFTs and directly uh, make link to the NFT and to sell it, and it's a very efficient way of uh, of showing uh, NFT, for example, because. Uh, because rien du tout, because nothing. <laughs> I don't finish my my sentence. Sorry. And you have a global audience too. Yes, yes, this is the interest. This is a, a, a way of, uh, it's, for me, it's like gallery, but it's not the same public uh, uh, that you have inside the gallery. You have uh, other people, you have other kind of people, and you have, uh, most of them are very young and very involved with uh, this digital era. They are born with it, and, uh, and it's a good way to, 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 to have contact with uh, this kind of public. And it's very important as an artist to be uh, in contact and to show your art uh, in the different uh, 
uh, part of uh, of uh, people uh, because uh, many there is so many bubbles now. There is the same phenomena with music. You know, at the beginning, music there is producer and uh, and uh, disc uh, fab and so and so. Now you can do everything and you can uh, make your success on TikTok. TikTok also for all this kind of uh, digital art is very interesting. Uh, if you can uh, test it, it's a very interesting way also to, to show uh, digital art. Um, of course, you need to find the, the good uh, uh, way of uh, showing it on, uh, on this kind of social network. But uh, as I said, there is no bad tools. There is many bad arts, but no bad tools <laughs> for showing art. And, um, and it's, uh, it's uh, as I said, it's a way of life. You, you, you need to be uh, aware of everything. You need to uh, think a lot about what what is your message, uh, finally, because there is so many things. It is the message is uh, the key for make the difference. Uh, there is not only just an aesthetical uh, uh, way of uh, showing things and uh, some aesthetical better than uh, other. Uh, the message, what we say, want to say to the other, it's very important for me because we are in an era or where we we are we need to to change the world and all this kind of tool with all this kind of tool we can change the world by sending message uh, in some bottle uh, it's my my way of thinking it's my way of life of course uh, but uh, I think it's a uh, it's very important for artists to be a part of this uh, big challenge and uh, we have tools for doing that I have I, I know the, the era where when there is only just gallery it was so difficult to to show things Maybe it's more. Maybe it's, it was more easier finally, because you go to the gallery, you put your pictures on the desk, and you say, "This is what I do." <laughs> Terminate. You you like it or you not? You don't like it. Now we are obliged to 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 put uh, the picture on different desk and different uh, way of uh, making uh, uh, art. Uh, personally, I make a lot of installation because I believe of this. I make installation with uh, uh, AR, uh, augmented reality, uh, using also uh, a video projection and mapping and uh, 3D printing and things like that. Because most of the people they are very uh, involved with uh, this kind of different level of uh, uh, watching art. You have TV, you have uh, your phone, you have, uh, and it's very interesting when you make, for example, augmented reality to see the people uh, having uh, for the first time uh, something new inside their, their box, uh, their phone, and uh, di discovering new dimension. By fact, it's very interesting uh, experimentation. Yes, but my question would be, how can we bring SL installation to the NFT blockchain? Yes, yeah. it's a fascinating time and how we can how we can do that. I see that as Nita is asking a question and says that if you have a question, click on the, the ball in front of me and you'll be able to ask your question. And she's asking, how can we bring Second Life installations to the NFT blockchain? Um, what is Second Life first? What is an installation inside Second Life? It's uh, you can translate it in uh, with 3D printing, with many other things. You can make video. You can make many things. Uh, for me, it's uh, I, I use, for example, sometimes some animation inside Second Life uh, in order to make video art. Uh, it, there is no no border between. Uh, the problem is that if you build something only just for Second Life, of course, it's difficult. Because your your mind is configured on it just for insights for inside second life, but if you have make a beautiful things or no 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 judgment, but you need to to ask to yourself what what can I do? I, you can make three D printing from the object for mesh, for example, and so you use a ZBrush or many other blender or things like that, and you can print it, for example. You can print it and make an exhibition inside the uh, other place. You can uh, make beautiful pictures and uh, use the AI uh, to have uh, the version of it and uh, bring it inside, uh, inside on uh, like an NFT also. You can make so many things. There is no border. If you think about border, you are lost. There is no border. Uh, as Nina is also kind of questioning uh, Kalata files, 
uh, and the different file formats um, and how they might affect um, being able to bring in AI and uh, into our installations. Uh, um, f for me, actually, I work a lot of uh, variation I, uh, with uh, AI and, uh, and I make uh, some uh, sculpture in uh, file, digital file first. And after the sculpture, I print it, I make it a real object, I put it inside nature, for example. You, you feel that there is a different level. Uh, first computer, after real object, and after the real object coming inside nature, making picture of this object, making video of this object inside nature. It's an example. Huh? But I yes. use a lot of this kind of, uh, of, uh, of uh, uh, concept of a statement. And after I have pictures of the object inside nature, I asked to the AI to make version of this uh, object inside nature. Of course, working by uh, trying to have another dimension of this object inside nature. It's real, uh, real, re really a work on, uh, on finding new dimension of the real object inside nature, for example. And I well, have uh, uh and I have picture at the end. Okay. This picture, okay. I, can, I can put it inside like an NFT or something like that. I can put it inside my installation with the real object in front, for example. And yes. augmented reality to see the uh, level, the real object inside nature. You have three or four different levels, and it's very immersive for the for this kind of exhibition. People are very inside something. Because they use the phone to see the dimension of nature, they, 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 there is very many tricky things like that. Right, right. And I see a question from P, who speaks Spanish, and she says, I've played with some of the AI tools, but my results are not bad, but they aren't what I expected. Do you think there's a language gap? She says, yeah, you know, she speaks Spanish. What, what about that? This, this, this is... Uh, uh, you have most the, the most uh, good result. Of course, you need to 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 have uh, um, connected your your language and your on your idea. Uh, it's this is, this is because this is a question of semantic, and uh, sometimes it's like to 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 go to from two D to three D. You need to have your idea and to bring it in with word. Your idea needs to be translated. It's a sort of translation. And of course, if you use language that, uh, of course, all these kind of tools I've made for uh, natural language, English, natural language, most of them. And uh, the base is uh, all the database are most of them are based also with uh, English natural language, American natural language. And it's uh, better. It's because you need to, as I said, it's a real work to, to have good results with uh, AI. And after, when you have a good work, for most of the time also, you need to, to, to go through with other software if you want to have a perfect uh, uh, result. But of course, this is a question of uh, of um, finding the good semantic of your ideas. By fact, I, I see if I can help uh, to 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 bro broke this uh, border of language. You need to find the right word in front of your your idea, and uh, with that you can you can play a lot. You need to 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 make several and several uh, uh, variation to to have a good result. Um, most of uh, people uh, who have success with uh, AI and with this kind of pictures, they are very well, uh, they have uh, high level of digital work with uh, many software, many, uh, many, 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 many things. But for me, the first, the first step is the language, of course. Yes, for the language is very important. Because if you have a, a, another translation, for example, if you speak Spanish and the AI need to translate Spanish to find inside the database some uh, 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 recurrence and, and so and so, uh, I don't know the word in uh, all the word in, in, in English. You see, <laughs> the words the words are the key everywhere. But with yes. uh, with this kind of machine, the idea need to be clear. You, you need to wrote first. You wrote, you find the, the, the occurrence, you, you find everything, and you, 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 you need to learn how to, to wrote by fact. Uh, yes. In front of your idea. It's very important. We'd never say about that, but, uh, 
It's so fascinating that we're not only talking about AI and the generating apps that it has, which I'll, I'll put some in the in the, tab, the local chat. Here's a lot of the applications that people yeah, can yeah. try out. But we're also talking about NFTs, so it's a lot of information to take in. And um, I wanted to just ask one question about NFTs because I'm really trying to wrap my understanding of them. Would you say that our use of Second Life Lindens is similar to NFTs and maybe Sally, is that, is it a similar thing to use Lindens? Uh, I don't have understand all the question personally, but uh, if uh, Savannah have understand. Well, our currency here being a, a, ah, okay. a virt virtual current currency being paying th for objects with Lindens, is that, is our NFTs different or are they similar? No, it's uh, it's different because very very uh, we need to say something about NFT very clearly. There is money behind. There is a lot of money. It's a question also of money behind, because there is investor. They buy some NFTs only just to make money with the NFTs, like in the normal art. You know, if there is collector, there is two sort of collectors: collector who are very involved and love art and artists and so and so, and there is collector who want who want to make money with your art. NFT is the same. It's a it's a huge. It's you need to 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 to, to spend some money to put your NFT in good uh, in in good uh, place. You need to spend some money. You need to, you need to, to, it's a business by fact. It's like a normal gallery. It's a business. Right. It's not so, it's not so idyllic. It's a business. Uh, most of the people, they don't sell any NFTs. Uh, there is many people who don't sell NFTs. And actually, there is a big problem because we are in the crash, uh, the big crash uh, of the NFT bubble. <laughs> Uh, with crypto and things, and uh, it's a, it's a real problem. But it's normal for me. It's normal. You s you know, I don't want to make the old guys, but when I make make web TV, first time I say we can make put TV on the web. Everybody say, well, oh, no, no way. It's not possible technically. Blah 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 blah. Okay, I make TV on the web in '97. Okay, I was one of the first in Europe to do that. And after there is a big, uh, everybody put money on uh, on a startup and uh, web TV and things. And after everything again crash. And after the crash, it's coming back. And now there is Google after and things, and it's growing up. And now we are in the crash era of uh, NFT and crypto. But uh, maybe in one or two years, it's coming back again and uh, uh, high up uh, again. Uh, but uh, we need to be clear, uh, it costs money to make a real business in NFT because you need to invest in a good platform to pay some uh, gas, to pay uh, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, it's, it's, it's not so uh, open, free, uh, new system against bank because most of the people who have invested inside uh, blockchain, it's huge investment. It's huge farms of uh, computer and things. It's millions and billions of dollars who <laughs> invest on it. It's not only just uh, you put your NFT and uh, yeah, okay. No, you have more chance to put your uh, your art inside a very well famous gallery in uh, in New York or in Paris and uh, but real gallery also, huh? not gallery you pay for being inside. But real gallery with a seller and things, you have more chance to sell something than in uh, open sea to put all your pictures on uh, on uh, on uh, on on, uh, on the platform. And so I can see is, that that, that you Sally is. You you there is two way of uh, making art also. It's your right. job. It's your it's you live with your art or you don't live with your art. If you want to live with your art, there is no secret. There is no secret. It needs investment. It needs work, and it needs uh, to to be uh, very clear and to work a lot for that. Right. Uh, if you don't have to 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 buy your new car with your NFTs, no problem. But if you and want to buy new car with your NFTs, you need to invest. You need to make uh, like like it's making also in uh, professional art. Some professional uh, artists, they, some friends buy the the, the picture for. Uh, 
uh, upgrading the, the coat of, uh, of uh, the art and blah, blah, blah. There is so many. It's a huge uh, business. And uh, NFT also, it's a huge business. It depends on what you want. If you want only just to show your art, and to share it with your friends and share it with some people who um, come and uh, discover your art. Uh, uh, yeah, no problem. If you right. have the idea of making uh, of making money, it's finished. Can you see I, in the local chat that Sally was just saying that uh, the difference between Second Life, the Lindens are fungible tokens, and they are not. Um, they're not based on blockchain. And then, as Mita is saying, bringing up. The copyright issues involved. Um, so we have to think about copyright, the origin of the art, as well as um, NFTs understanding that they're blockchain, where uh, Lindens are not based on blockchain, correct? Yeah, but uh, you know, copyright of art, it's a big debate also. Uh, you can stress about, oh, somebody can copy my, copy my, my art and things and blah, blah, blah. I am not obsessed by that. Frankly speaking, I don't care about that. Because I think that if I am copied, it's, a, it's an honor. It's, a, it's great because I, I'm very famous if I am copied. And uh, most of uh, the, the, the big masters, they, they, they are copied. And uh, when you are copied, it's that you have made something very good. <laughs> and right. uh, right. uh, and uh, you need to be uh, some... Uh, uh, Yes, I don't. I don't care about that. Of course, but uh, copy, uh, copyright. Uh, sorry, but NFTs. When you sell a painting or a sculpture, uh, even if it's a three D sculpture or things like that, you give to the guys who buy it a certificate of authenticity. Okay, it's a it's a paper, and you put it, you sign, you put all the information, and it's a certificate of authenticity that the art is uh, selling to these guys, and blah blah blah, and things. And you, if you make it in, in, on the rules, the rules are like this when you sell to collectors. What is NFTs? It's a digital certificate of authenticity. That's it. It's nothing more. It's just a digital certificate of authenticity. Tomorrow, when uh, there is the uh, Gauguin of uh, this uh, digital era uh, in uh, 100 uh, century, uh, it's, it costs uh, millions of dollars, billions of dollars. We use blockchain to find the certificate of authenticity. And some people make fake uh, certificate of authenticity. Like every time in the art, there is uh, people making fake. There is people wanting to make money with uh, fake Gauguin or fake Renoir or fake uh, 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 every, everybody. Uh, it's the same in one century. There is people. We see that there is attack, uh, acre, uh, acre attack on a blockchain. There is a attack on your uh, wallet. There is, uh, when you are very aware of all these kind of things, there is attack. There is, uh, it's not secure at uh, 100%. It's not yes, exist. Yes. And we do need to look in the local chat and see if any of the audience has come up with another question for us. And I do see that Sarvana has been talking a little bit in the chat about there's always that negative side in the process. And as Mita is saying that many artists um, have left the virtual worlds because of some of these um, problems with copyright issues. Um, Sarvana is saying it's always good to check the fine print which a third party software um, used while creating their digital media. Oh, um, as, Mita meant, as Mita meant, they've left Second Life because of copyright issues in a proprietary uh, company. Um, and so there's, there's all of those issues behind the scene. And Bevan is saying, this is really interesting. I'm looking to see if there's any other questions from, from the audience. Um, and as yeah. Mita, Feel free to let us know how we can wrap this up. I know it's a lot of information to take in how art is being impacted by technology, artificial intelligence, and NFTs. And um, I hope that we can have another session on this after we've let this soak in and we can better understand. Um, uh, so did you have anything else, Sarvana? I see your mic is on. Did you have something else to say? 
No, what I wanted to just state, just reminding people, when you sign up for Second Life or whatever digital platform you may be using, read the terms of, of service, the terms of that's stated by that party, because sometimes they will state anything that's created using that software, and basically it's the software that we're using, using that software is their property. So that's one of the reasons why it's always good to check out the terms of use and the various other conditions that's connected to the software that you're using, especially if you want to create something within using that particular uh, tool, that particular property. They said they create the software, anything that software creates belong to them. Okay, know that up front so you know where to create your, your work at. And I just want to get back real quick. Uh, someone mentioned about the uh, uh, Second Life Lindens. In this community, the Second Life Linden is our fungible token. That is our currency within this in this community. Just like in the United States, the U.S. dollar is that currency. In another country, the euro is that currency and what have you. So whatever that community is, that currency, that's your fungible token. Just like with the U.S. dollar, it's our fungible token, but if I convert go somewhere else, it might not have the same value in another place, but in that community, that's that fungible token. That's the same thing, like I said, Non uh, NFTs is non fungible tokens. A dollar the equals a dollar equals a dollar when it comes to fungible, but an NFT may will not have that cannot be exchanged like that. This was exciting. Thank you for the invite to speak. Yes, thank you to all of our panelists. Um, it's it, as I said, it's so much to take in, and it's really quite fascinating to think how um, art will will change. Thank you, Esmita, for um, bringing this amazing art panel and also the artwork that is down below. If anyone wants to stay after and um, head down below us, the floor below us has some of the AI generated artwork um, that Esmita has curated here uh, for us in Second Life. So thanks again, and thank you to those recording and for those who were over at the Nonprofit Commons also chatting about AI-assisted art and NFTs. Goodbye, everyone. <laughs>